Welcome to the Inform Fitness Podcast, 20 minutes with New York Times bestselling author, Adam Zickerman. In this podcast, we're going to discuss my original vision for how we started Inform Fitness and where I want Inform Fitness to go and where we think exercise should go in the future. It's nice to see that my original intuition over 20 years ago has been validated by some recent science. So we're gonna bring on some scientists in this industry, some great testimonials from clients that have experienced this. I'm gonna be bringing in musicians and very interesting people, bodybuilders talking about how little they actually work out. It's going to shed some light on some very important topics. Inform Nation, thanks again for joining us here once again at the Inform Fitness Podcast, 20 minutes with Adam Zickerman and friends. This is part two of Fat Loss and Face Melting. A little confused by the title? Hang on, we'll get to that in just a second. But before that, if you didn't have a chance to listen to part one, we recommend you go back and give it a listen first before venturing on into this episode. Of course, again today, we have the regular cast of characters, Mike Rogers, Sheila Melody, myself, Tim Edwards, and the founder of Inform Fitness, Adam Zickerman. But our special guest joining us once again is Joni Pimentel of the LA-based all-female trio, No Small Children. Rockin' chicks by night, school teachers by day. The main reason Joni's joining us again is because she has lost over 118 pounds over the past two years, in large part through her participation in The Power of Ten. In this episode, we'll revisit Joni's amazing weight loss journey, and of course, we'll finally explain the title of this episode, Fat Loss and Face Melting. Oh, and one more thing. I have the great privilege of announcing a major development for Joni's group, No Small Children. News that was received just a short time after the recording of this podcast. News that I know that after hearing this episode, you'll want to grab your friends and family and head to the movies here in the summer of 2016. That's enough hints for right now. What do you say we rejoin the conversation with Adam, Mike, Sheila, myself, and Joni Pimentel? Here's part two of Fat Loss and Face Melting. You know, Joni, uh, one of our last few episodes was about fat loss, uh, and it really ties into what we're doing today, too, because uh, we're going to talk a little bit about your career as a musician, your career as a teacher, uh, and and weight loss, too. But looking at your website, nosmallchildren.com, and I was trying to do a little research and learning a little bit about you before we had you in the program, I love the very first line uh, in the About section. It says, three teachers walk into a bar, onto the stage, plug their instruments in, and then they melt your face. And, <laughs> and, and after watching all of you play through some of your videos, you definitely uh, perform some face melters there. Uh, so I love the way that that all tied in perfectly. You know, I face melting somebody's face is a is a common term used by punk rockers and metal guys. And so, Tim, you read on our website that we try to melt faces with our performance. And, and that is true. But my face has literally been melted by doing this workout. So I'm very grateful. Joni, what do you consider your most face-melting song? (laughs) You know, Mm. my most face-melting song is the next one we're going to write, probably. I would say (laughs) Ah, it's the next one. Um, So That's the... That's a great answer. <laughs> it's, also, it's, also, it's also a cop out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, okay. Now we're going to challenge you from answer, this point. Just tell, give back. me one. Yeah. <laughs> one you love to, to melt people's faces with. There's a lot of them. It's like being asked to pick, pick your favorite kid. Well, you know, it's not going to be one of your ballads, right? So come on. Now well, we're telling you know what? One you love to do. That's not necessarily true. That's not, That's necessarily, not necessarily true. true. I'm with her on that. Because, <laughs> um, you know, most of my life, I have been a soul singer. This is really the first project I've ever been involved in where I'm doing punky rock songs. To me, the, the idea of melting your face is more about the intensity of your performance. And it has not so much to do with the tempo of the song, but how you deliver it. And so there's been plenty of times in my life when I'm singing soul music that, that I just pour everything I have into it in that moment. And that's for me what it means to melt someone's face. So it's an intensity well, thing. Uh, just like, it's like slow motion weight training. Yeah. That's right. I was, thinking more like, I was thinking more like motorhead type melt. Uh, uh, well, I was, <laughs> Adam, <laughs> honestly, I was thinking more about slow motion weight training, which is yeah. very <laughs> slow <laughs> and very, very intense. Yes, yeah, it, it is. It totally melts your face. <laughs> and, I do. And I totally your hear fat cells you're as well. Regarding how you can melt your face off being a very soulful singer. Well, and, uh, and the proof to it is if you look up 
Joni's version of Alleluia. Mm. Uh, my gosh, my face was melted when I heard that. It was beautiful and really yeah. depicts your amazing range as an artist. Oh, thank you so much. And actually, that was recorded for my mother, who mm-hmm. has I been, remember. Yes, who asked me um, one year in a typical Italian mother way, said, I don't want any presents this year. <laughs> I just want you to record this song for me. I love it so much. And will you please do it? I don't want any presents. So... I, I wish my wife would say that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when, I, when I write her a poem or a song, she's like, is that it? That can't be it. Is it? You can't just come in with just a, a poem. <laughs> no, but I, I, I've actually gotten a lot of positive feedback about that. I, I One of my very favorite um, songs composed ever. I really love it. But um, the song that comes to mind right off the top of my head is, is the very first track on our most recent album. It's called Big Steps. It's kind of uh, synonymous with some of the changes that have happened for me over the past year, which, you know, you know, if you're going to do it, do it 100 percent. You know, I had to basically making getting in control of my health a full time job. And so I went into it big. So, you know, if you get a chance to look up the lyrics of that song, it they are really powerful. And when I play that song, uh, I feel really powerful. And uh, Lisa sings vocals on that, but, you know, I get to sing some backup vocals. It just, I, I just feel really powerful when we play it. And we actually recently have been opening our set with that song. Joni, were you concerned uh, w- when you went on your uh, weight loss mission uh, that when you lost the weight that it would affect your voice? You know, that's a question I've received more than once. And that's kind of a misnomer. It doesn't actually happen with weight loss, uh, any effect on the voice, really. It, it used to be thought many years ago, it's kind of a throwback to a classical voice. And I'm trained as a classical singer, believe it or not. But I, they used to believe that you know, opera singers had to be really hefty in order to um, project their sound effectively. And that's actually not true. There's, there's really no difference at all. Um, if anything, you could say it might help because um, in order to sing properly, you have to use your diaphragmatic muscles in your belly. And the, the better developed your, your diaphragmatic muscles are, um, the better it is for your voice. It was, like I said, it's kind of a throwback to a, a, a very old fashioned premise that uh, has been pretty much disproven. But uh, so the short answer is no, I was not worried. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a great concern. I'm sure there are a lot of mm-hmm. singers that might be concerned about losing the weight, that it would change their performance. So I think it's a fantastic question. And thank you for answering that. Just to add to that, it's beneficial because the type of music that I do requires me to be very lively on stage. And, and I am, have always been kind of lively on stage, but now it's just a little easier to get around. You know, I can jump up and down and, and uh, not worry that uh, my clothing's going to split. <laughs> well, the stage is going to fall down. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> Thankfully, that's never happened to me. I've never had any stage collapses. So. <laughs> and let's circle back, if you don't mind, back to the exercise and back to mm-hmm. the power of 10 and in form fitness, because your story is is a little bit different. Uh, mm-hmm. Certainly, your success is astounding Thank to have you. such amazing success. And which I seems to me like a relatively short period of time to lose that much weight, but to do it in a nice, steady pace in a very yep. healthy way to do it. But you worked out with Sheila mm-hmm. at Inform Fitness for how long? I believe we did about six months, Sheila. Is that right? Yeah. yeah from beginning to end. And, and that, yeah. you, you have a very interesting, busy schedule. You're a musician, you. you're on the road. So it doesn't necessarily work out for you to work out at <laughs> one facility because you're on the road. So what's interesting, what, uh, one of the, the components that's interesting about your story is that you continue to practice this power of 10, but not at an informed fitness facility. That's correct. Yeah. So Sheila and I had worked together for about six months. And then at, at some point, our schedules, just despite our best effort, just couldn't coordinate. And it was primarily because of my schedule. Um, like you said, between travel and touring, things like that. So at the very beginning, when I attended the open house, I received the Power of Ten, the book, and read through it. 
I treat it like a Bible, honestly. And mm-hmm. I've actually since loaned it to a number of other people saying, everything you need to know is in this book. So when Sheila and I could no longer meet together, I was still really committed to the process and was so happy with the results. I didn't want to give it up. So I took the book, opened it up to the workouts, took a picture of each of the the various workouts with my phone, and then took my phone with me to the gym <laughs> and did the um, exercises on my own using the pictures. And you can choose how many times a week that you want to do the workout. And because I'm still in a in some active weight loss right now, I choose to do it twice a week. But um, in the beginning, I was only doing it once a week. Now I do it twice a week. And I, I use uh, an app on my phone where I can log in everything that I eat and all my exercise. And, I, and it allows you to create your own exercises. What's the name of that app? Uh, I use MyFitnessPal. Mm-hmm. And the exercises, you can enter them in and create your own. So I actually created the exercises, Power 10 Workout 1, Power 10 Workout 2, Workout 3, but that's so forth and so on. So that when I log in all of my exercise, my physical activity, I just click a button and and it updates it. So I can always keep track of the last workout I did. So when I go, you know, uh, on Mondays and Thursdays, I can see what I last did so I know which one to do next. (laughs) And it it has worked out really well. And there's a couple people at the gym who have kind of watched me shrink over the last year. And I know they're really curious and they really want to ask me because I am not doing the same thing that they're doing at all. You know, there'll be a person (laughs) sitting next to me lifting really heavy and grunting and carrying on. And, you know, they do fast and fast. And in my mind, I'm thinking, slow, 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 you know, (laughs) go slow. And I actually, one, one, two, two, and I count to 10 and I, and I do the same thing every time. Um, And I know they're very curious and I'm just waiting for the moment for somebody to ask me. I'm just curious, what are you up to? And then I'm going to evangelize Power 10. There's no doubt about it. Hey, don't forget to stick around till the end of the podcast for a major announcement for Joni and her bandmates in her group, No Small Children. An announcement that'll make you want to head to the movies here in the summer of 2016. Can't wait to share all of that with you. Right now, I'm going to share with you a promo code that will save you 15% off your grocery bill. If you are here listening to this podcast, there is no doubt that you are dedicated to living a healthier lifestyle. It's not like this is a radio station and you're flipping around the dial looking for a good song. You're listening to this podcast to make some changes in your life and with your health, just like our guest Joni did to lose over 118 pounds. Let's start with your food. ThriveMarket.com is the place you'll find informed fitness-friendly food, wholesome food, at wholesale prices. It's just that simple. I have already done the research for you. Thanks to Adam's book, I now know the right foods to eat, how much I should eat, and I've lost several pounds of fat and replaced that weight with new muscle thanks to the power of 10. I've researched the prices between the grocery store and Thrive Market, along with the selection, and the winner, hands down, is Thrive Market. You heard me talk about it over the last few episodes. Now it's time to check it out for yourself. Visit thrivemarket.com to register for your 30-day free trial, place an order, and if you're happy with the service and the products, join the community. At that point, it's just an annual fee of $59.95, which you'll probably save in your first order. On top of that, email me directly at tim at inboundpodcasting.com, and I'll send you a promo code that'll shave 15% off your first order. Inform Fitness and Thrive Market are on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. Speaking of healthy living, let's get back to the conversation with Joni Pimentel, who continues to fill us in on her mindset and strategies that helped her lose over 118 pounds. There's another taste of Joni and the girls from No Small Children. If you need more than just a little taste, check out their website, nosmallchildren.com. There, you can sample all of their music and even purchase all three of their albums. They also have several tour dates up there for you to check out, some shows here in the Los Angeles area this summer, and several dates back east throughout the month of August. So if you're in the area, stop on by, say hello to Joni, and tell her you heard her right here on the Inform Fitness Podcast. Joni, in order to lose over 118 pounds, you really had to make a serious commitment to this weight loss journey. 
What was the mindset you adopted to tackle this, what I'm sure must have felt like an impossible task? Even though the changes I've made have been small and incremental, I did have to change my mindset. And that had to be, that was the one dramatic thing where I basically decided I was going to make getting in control of my health a full-time job. That was going to become my full-time job. And I had to be committed to it 100%. Now, that commitment may come in small little increments, but my head really had to be in the right place for it. And then the other thing I wanted to mention, this is actually really important to me, is that I have never been ashamed of being a fat person. I, I I felt beautiful before, and I feel beautiful now. It honestly has absolutely nothing to do with the way that I looked, although, I mean, I love the way that I look now, but it was never about shame for me. I've never been ashamed of being a big person. It's 100% about I need to live a long time. That just wasn't going to happen if I stayed at that weight. I wrote that down earlier when you said you want to live a long time because it's something that I think about like all the time as well. Like I even, I always joke, I say, I'm, I plan on living to 140 years old and be spry and energetic and could do anything. Mm-hmm. Even though it sounds like a ridiculous joke, it actually is something that's in my mind. And speaking of music and rock and roll, and you know, I recently saw, I saw Straight Outta Compton. Did you guys see that film? Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and the scene with Easy e when they tell him that he has AIDS, and you know it's right when he's about to get his his band back together again and everything, and he's all his hopes and dreams, and all of a sudden it kind of gets flushed. They're like your T cell count is like fourteen, and you know it's like. And I was like, I watched that, and I just thought to myself, and I looked at my wife, and I said, "Man, you got to stay healthy, man. You got to set me for your dreams to do everything." It just made me think, like, do whatever it takes to be healthy. I don't know, like you just brought it back to me, that whole idea, and it becomes visceral for my own personal life. And, you know, I don't want to evangelize. I mean, we all have to figure out what we all want for ourselves, but it's just, it's to hear you say that, though. I think we all want to be healthy so we can see our children. And Adam, what was your mantra again? Exercise you need so you can live the life you want. Exactly, exactly. And, and um, Joni, and- are you you are living the life you want. You're you're a teacher, you're influencing young lives, and you're, you're rocking all around the country. How has this change in your lifestyle and in your body this has been only what about two years or so yeah. a year and a half you can so you can notice the difference now how you mm-hmm. feel how you look is there a confidence thing tell me the difference between before power of 10 and now I would preface this by saying even at my biggest I was not ashamed of being heavy uh, I felt beautiful then and I feel beautiful now there are some practical things, though, with come, that come with losing that much weight that have improved the quality of my life. Um, I can fit in airplane seats way easier <laughs> now. <laughs> and I love to travel, and I have to travel quite a bit. Uh, so that's been a really big change. Buying clothes is a little more fun because there's more fun things for people my size. Um, those, those, those are more superficial things, but... In all honesty, the world is designed for people who are not as big as I was. So I feel like I fit into the world around me a little better. Uh, I would also say that I feel very strong, you know, my, that I don't worry about something getting hurt if I pick it up a certain way. And as I get older, I will admit that is something that's important to me. Mm -hmm. I I want to protect my body and having lean muscle mass is really the best way for me to do that. And I had said this before, and I want to live a long time, but I also want the quality of that life to be as good as possible. And I know that having a fit and strong body, for me anyway, is the best way for me to achieve that. I've recently actually uh, come across a number of studies that are making really kind of uh, remarkable connections between the health benefits between uh, exercising and reduced uh, risk of some serious diseases, in particular cancer. I was just, I think Sheila, I shared those with you and how important it is not only for your heart and, and for your body, but also to reduce the health risks that threaten so many of us as we get to be older. When you talk about benefits to cancer, 
you know, we're seeing the actual proteins, these myokines that we talked about in another episode. I mean, we're seeing properties of these myokines that actually have cancer-fighting properties. So mm-hmm. we're actually starting to learn the actual mechanisms involved in how high-intensity exercise actually helps fight cancer, among other things. It's, it's fascinating. It is fascinating. And, and something that drives me very much is evidence-based action. Like, if, if I'm going to pour myself into something... I have to really believe it, and I can't really believe it unless there is evidence of its effectiveness. And it's that's something that's followed me pretty much throughout my whole life, not just about health and fitness, but about anything. If I'm going to really buy into something, it has to be believable. And I had mentioned that earlier. This system makes sense to me. It's believable. And as somebody who has a cancer history, that connection between exercise and reducing cancer risk just appeals to me a great deal and just add that to the enormous list of reasons why it's good for you to do it what what was the thing that made uh uh, what was the point where you actually believed it because most people from our experience when the first time they hear a 30 minute workout once a week a lot of people i find to be uh, thing is people believing that, oh my God, you can't, obviously that doesn't work 20 minutes, 30 minutes, once a week or twice a week. When was it that you actually believed it? It was about three weeks after I started working with Sheila. And in the interest of full disclosure, I met with Sheila because she's my friend and I felt like I had, you know, I didn't want to hurt her feelings and, you know, but honestly, so you didn't buy it at first when no, she told you <laughs> not at first. And, uh, you know, uh, she she made a good sell. Um, and so but at first I didn't. But after the first workout, I was like, I was spent when I walked out of there. Mm-hmm. That's honestly, that's the first thing I was convinced it was going to be a workout because my legs were like jelly when I walked out of there that first time to go into my car. And I think I texted you, Sheila, right after yeah. that and said, oh, my God. Yeah, it was, it, I felt really like it was definitely strenuous. And then about three weeks later, it kind of happened all of a sudden where I became very aware that I was actually stronger, physically stronger. And I think I was picking up a piece of equipment um, yeah. going into a show it was an amplifier. And Lisa plays through this uh, triple rectifier, which for non-musicians, um, it is a very heavy piece of equipment. <laughs> and uh, we don't have Brodies right now. I'm hoping in the near future that will come. But uh, for now, we move all of our I'll own I'll be a Roadie. I'll be a Roadie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got it. You got it. But at the time, I was picking up this amplifier and moving it on stage. And I know the amplifier didn't get any lighter. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it had to have been me. And that was, that was kind of the moment where I realized that it was really working. And, I, and the next week when I came into talked to Sheila, I was very excited to share that with her and told her that it, it's working. It's working. And then that was, that was really the first time in my life that I had stuck with an exercise routine that long. And secondly, that it produced results that were very noticeable to me in a relatively short period of time. I and mean, that was three weeks. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't even know. Sheila, do you have the 6, 12, 24 pack is that what you sell in LA? Yeah, that's what we do sell. Yeah, that's what we're doing in New York also. And uh, and Adam and I have talked about this a long time ago about like why six, why twelve, why twenty four. And mm-hmm. it seems like from our experience, you usually make that turnaround somewhere in the first around six weeks, like where you're yep. like, oh my god, I really am feeling stronger right now. And it's only because of this once a week workout. And you may sense that you had a hard workout after your first workout, but you know, muscle takes a little bit of time to actually. Uh, Mm-hmm. To to adapt, um, and then you get you get acclimated to it pretty quickly, right? Like your body starts to go okay. You you get used to that having that little feeling after your workout, but you recover quicker. It doesn't take me down as like it did in those first few workouts, you know. Yes, yeah, and I think it was also I knew what to expect after that too. So right. you know, in the very beginning, I I had to actually experience it in order to believe it. So, I know. I remember sitting there in the office with you, and you were just like. I hate exercising. I just, I just have to be honest with you, Sheila. I hate it. And I said, well, good. 
you're going to love this. And you're like, well, you seem very confident about that. And I'm like, <laughs> I am. <laughs> you did. It's also, it's on the 48 hours. Uh, uh, when we were on 48 hours, Barbara Walters said that too. She was, the first thing she said was, I hate exercise. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. And, and you know what? The, uh, the other thing that really appealed to me about it was um, that when you're sitting down at the equipment, the main focus first is always to make sure that you're doing it safely. So nothing, you don't hurt yourself. But secondly, you know, all the time at gyms, you see trainers working with their, their, their clients and they're like, come on, you can do it. You know, one more, push it, da, 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 you know, and it's loud and it's, you know, you know, in their face and come on and this and that. And she was like, okay, Joni, just give me one more. <laughs> and, 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 and it was, but it was, it, there, there was a certain amount of quiet focus that made right. it easier for me to concentrate on exactly what I was doing, not just to muscle through something, but to really focus on the exercise so that um, I could do it precisely. And as somebody, point. as somebody who is surrounded by noise and activity all day and all night, um, <laughs> to have my focus become so much more um precise that really helped a lot and and i enjoyed the kind of quiet pace of it well, that's, uh, a, that's important for performance we you know and it's what's funny is just this past week or uh sorry like last thursday i have a new client who said who literally said it's amazing how your voice is so calm and so peaceful and so wretched. I was like, thank you. <laughs> That's great. So she's lost close to 120 pounds. She's a cancer survivor. She's a teacher by day and a musician by night and a member of the LA based band, no small children. Joni Pimentel, you're an amazing woman. You really Thank are. You. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. I appreciate that. So so now that everybody's had a chance to get to know you through the podcast, let's let our listeners get to know you through your music. So if you can tell us tell us about the albums, how they can find your website, and, uh, and whereabouts you'll be touring in the summer and fall of 2016. Absolutely. So we actually have three albums. We have two full-length um, albums and an EP. The first one is Dear Youth. That's our EP. And then uh, Trophy Wife is the second one. And and our most recent release was is called uh, Hold Tight, I'm Flying. All of our music is available online, uh, iTunes, CD Baby, Bandcamp. But if you go to our website, which is nosmallchildren.com, you can see links to all of our videos, all of our music. Um, you can buy merchandise, all those things, and uh, learn also about our our performance dates, tour dates, things like that. And we're super active on social media. Please like us on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are also going to be on tour on the East Coast and in the Midwest in the entire for the entire month of August or most of the month of August. So, like I said, if you go to our website, all those dates are up there. So we will and we post regularly. So if people want to come out and see us. Um, we'd love to see them. Well, we'll certainly put your uh, the links to your website and tour dates and everything else up on the show notes here. And so if you're listening in the Midwest or, or you're here in Los Angeles, go out, see Joni, and walk up and say, hey, I heard you on the podcast, and, <laughs> and become a fan and give them a, give them a like on Facebook for sure as well. Joni, thank you again for joining us. What a treat it's been to meet you via Skype. I can't wait to meet you in person. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me. And there you have it. It's fat loss and face melting here on the Inform Fitness Podcast. Now, as I mentioned at the top of the show, the ladies in No Small Children received some awesome news shortly after the recording of this episode. What's the first thing you think about when someone says, who are you going to call? Go ahead, say it out loud. Unless you're at the gym or walking the dog or something, then you might get some weird looks. But who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. Well, Joni and her cohorts in No Small Children have been asked by the folks at Sony Pictures to perform the classic Ray Parker Jr. song over the closing credits and bloopers in the July 2016 Sony Pictures remake of the 80s classic Ghostbusters. Isn't that cool? So head out to the theater, see Ghostbusters, and stick around for the credits and listen to Joni and the girls in No Small Children. Hey, by the way, we have a special bonus episode coming up next week. 
If you've listened to the podcast with any regularity, you know that all the members of the podcast team here are spread out all over the country. Sheila is in Toluca Lake. I am also here in the Los Angeles area at a different location. And then we hear from Mike and Adam across the country in New York City. Well, Adam Zickerman visited the Inform Fitness Toluca Lake location near Burbank in June of 2016, and we filmed a ton of videos that'll be released shortly, and you can see those at informfitness.com. Well, during Adam's visit here in LA, Joni stopped by Inform Fitness not only to chat with Adam on film, but Adam pulled out his guitar, and Joni lent us her voice, and we captured it all on video. We'll have the audio for you, Inform Nation, right here on the podcast, so make sure you come on back and give it a listen. You'll be glad you did. If you have a question or a comment for Adam, Mike, or Sheila, we sure would love to hear from you. Shoot us an email or record a voice memo on your phone and send it to podcast at informfitness.com. Or you can even give us a call and leave a message at 888-983-5020, extension 3. That's 888-983-5020, extension 3. All feedback is welcome. And I'm going to ask you to do one more thing before we let you go. If you like the show and want to hear more of them, please subscribe to the podcast right here in iTunes or wherever you might be enjoying your podcast. Of course, it's absolutely free to subscribe, and we would love it if you left us a review. Thanks again for joining us, Inform Nation. We sure do appreciate you listening right here on the Inform Fitness Podcast. For Adam Zickerman, Mike Rogers, and Sheila Melody, I'm Tim Edwards with the Inbound Podcasting Network.